I'm Colonel Pete Fessler. My uh, duty title at home station is the commander of the 1st Fighter Wing, but for here at Red Flag, I'm the Air Expeditionary Wing Commander. And then, um, so Colonel Fessler, what are the most unique aspects of this year's Red Flag? Well, this one's unique because it's the first time we've had the F-35 participate in Red Flag. So we've got, uh, in addition to the normal array of F-15s, F-16s, and recently F-22s, we're now adding in the F-35. And this red flag also has uh, our uh, coalition partners, the Australians and the uh, United Kingdom, Britain brought their uh, aircraft as well. I'll tell you that red flag is more than just an air to air exercise, it's also an air to ground exercise. So we're doing not only attacks against aircraft to establish air superiority, but attacks against targets on the ground. The reason we need to train in a realistic environment is that uh, we need to prepare our pilots, our air crew, our uh, space operators, our cyber operators, for their combat missions. And the only way to do that is to train them in a realistic environment. Uh, it's like putting on your pads and, and training full up for a football game before you go to the Super Bowl. We're unlikely to go to war in the future without our coalition partners. I think the, uh, the, the chances of the United States going it alone are, are slim to none. So we need to learn how to fight and execute with our coalition partners on the first night of the war. Well, the, uh, it's, in our, it's in our slogan, airspace and cyberspace. This is, these are the domains that we operate in. Uh, we operate from the surface up to high uh, geostationary orbit. All of the capabilities that we have in those domains, uh, when combined, produce uh, enhanced effects. The effects that we generate are uh, more lethal. They're more effective against our adversary. We can fight a war in an air domain only, but we are more effective when you add in the capacity that we get through the cyber domain or the space domain. So we're, this is a bit new to us, but the F-22 and the F-35 were originally designed from the outset to operate together. This is what they were built for. Uh, the F-22 was supposed to escort the F-35 against targets on the ground. So this is the first time to actually put that together. We've done small scale exercises, but this is the first time where we've taken the F-22, the F-35, and all of those capabilities that the Air Forces of the United States, Australia, and the United Kingdom can bring to bear, put them all together in the airspace at the same time and fight against a realistic threat. Well, that's just it. It's, it's integration. The very word you used is what I hope to gain out of this. And I've been talking to the, uh, all of the operators who've been here about that since the onset. Uh, a lot of times in our um, business, we tend to operate in stovepipes. The cyber operators have their area of expertise. The air breathing, the fighter pilots have their area of expertise. The space operators have their areas of expertise. And they rarely cross streams. Uh, because of that, when we plan, occasionally we tend to plan in those stovepipes. The fighter pilots plan out their mission. The space operators plan out their mission, et cetera. And what I'm asking these guys to do is from the outset to start their planning together. So it's integrated at the very outset so that you can achieve those effects that I talked about on the battlefield. The same reason I said uh, that I talked about before when you asked about the importance of coalition, uh, training with our coalition partners applies to the command structure. We are unlikely to go to war by the, as the United States by itself. We're going to fight with our coalition partners. Because of that, we need to become accustomed to command and control with our coalition partners. Out of the uh, total force here, nearly 600 of the, uh, the folks deployed for Red Flag are actually from the United Kingdom. So it makes complete sense for my deputy to be a Royal Air Force officer. Uh, that's a great question. So in the, my first Red Flag was in uh, actually January of 1998, I believe. And in that Red Flag, we had F-15s, F-16s, uh, RAF tornadoes, and a smattering of other aircraft, A-10s, etc. That was a almost purely conventional air fight. Uh, there were no fifth gen assets, no stealth assets involved at all. We had, uh, and in that fight, my job as a wingman was to stay visual with my flight lead. He would get me to the merge with the adversary, and if I did everything right, I would get in a, uh, a within visual range encounter. That's changed significantly. The wingmen that we have out there now are air battle managers from a fighter cockpit. In the F-22 and the F-35, with the sensor suite that they have and the integration, they can actually can, uh, see the battlefield in, uh, in a way that I was never capable of in the F-15C that I was operating then. So the first part of it is just the level of expectation of the air crew. Now the effects that we're generating right now, bringing the F-22 and the F-35 into it, well, they're low observable aircraft. So the fighters, the adversaries that we have looking for us, they, they can't very easily detect us. And so in a fight in 1997, everybody saw everybody else coming. 
and it arrived at the merge and you got into um, initially beyond visual range, but eventually within visual range combat. Now your adversaries know roughly where you are, but they don't know exactly where you are. And that applies to both the F-22 and the F-35. So now you're, our fighter pilots are being air battle managers as they drive to that merge and they're usually approaching our adversaries undetected. And that's a capability that's not only against an air-to-air -air threat, but it's against a surface-to-air threat as well. That low observable technology that the F-22 and the F-35 possess is effective against surface-to-air missiles as well. So it's a pretty significant change from where we were 20, so, 20 or so years ago when I started uh, flying in red flag for the first time.